In our last lecture, we had introduced image transformations and basically we were discussing about the unitary transformations and the idea behind that was primarily that uh, any image can be uh, generated as a series summation of several basis functions. Okay. Now, before we go over to uh, today's topic, let us recapitulate some of the things which we discussed in the last class and especially all the matrix relationship. In case you have any doubts about the mathematical relationship which we have written, okay. Uh, today, first I would like to make some clarifications on those points. Firstly, that uh, our transformation relationships were like this, that originally what we had was a vector u. So, u was defined as a vector, okay, indexed by u n, where n is lying between 0 to n minus 1, all right. And this was pre-multiplied by the A matrix and we were getting the transformed vector V, okay. And the relationship which we had written corresponding to this was we wrote VK is equal to summation N is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 A K N U N, all right. And the reverse transformation, okay was written as follows. In matrix rotation, it was u vector was a star transpose, okay, v. Basically, we wrote a star transpose because a inverse is same as that of a star transpose because of a being the unitary matrix. All right. So, what we wrote there was u n was equal to summation over k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 summation v k a star k n okay where n was in the range of 0 to n minus 1 so this was the inverse transformation relationship and this was the forward transformation relationship now basically uh, for the benefit of the people uh, who had little bit of difficulty with the matrix algebra, okay, uh, I mean because in the last class some doubts were asked about whether it should be A star K N or whether it should be A star N K, okay. Let me just quickly clarify that and whatever I am writing for the uh, relationship in the vector form equally holds good for the relationship in the matrix form. That is to say that in the case of two dimensional uh, functions where u becomes a function of, I mean, where u we were writing as index m comma n and v we were writing as index k comma l. That means to say u was the uh, original two dimensional function and v was the transformed two dimensional function. That same logic or the argument will hold good. So, first let me uh, just break up this matrix and you will see that the relationship which has been written is quite obviously following from this. That is to say, the matrix relationship and the relationship written in the summation form are exactly compatible. Let us see that. So, what we are having is, from the relation V vector is equal to the product of A matrix and uh, the U vector, this we can write down like this. V vector, let us write it as the elements V0, V1, etc., etc., some general term Vk and then V n minus 1 is the last element of the V vector. This can be written as the element of the A matrix. So, I am writing that as small a, small a 0 0, the next element will be small a 0 1, the next element so on so on, it will be the last element will be a 0 comma n minus 1 and for the second row this will be written as a 1 0, this will be written as a 1 1 
etc etc a 1 n minus 1 okay and then uh, the general term will be a k 0 then we will have a k 1 okay etc etc a k n minus 1 and the last row will be a n minus 1 0 a n minus 1 1 and the last element of this matrix the last diagonal element will be a n minus 1 n minus 1 all right and that and this matrix should be multiplied by the u vector whose elements will be simply written as u0 u1 etc etc up to u n minus 1 all right so that for the term vk i choose any particular row okay and I am interested in finding out the VK, then very simply VK will be written as AK0 multiplied by U0, AK1 multiplied by U1, etc., etc. The last term will be AK n minus 1, U n minus 1. So that very simply we are getting VK as the summation over index n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. A K N U N. Is that okay? That is how we are getting this term V K. Now coming to the reverse transformation. Okay. For the reverse transformation, the relationship for us is that the U vector which we would like to get from the transformed vector V. V is the transformed vector and if I want to get back the original vector U, then what I have to do, simply I have to pre-multiply this V vector by the A star transpose. And now I can write this relationship, okay, I can break up in this form. Since it is U, I should write it as U0, U1, the vector U can be written as U0, U1, some general term UN and the last term will be U n minus 1. All right, and this is equal to A star transpose. The A star transpose means what? Just this A matrix which I had written over here, okay, I have to take the complex conjugate for each one of these terms and thereafter I have to take the transpose. That is to say, my A star 1 0 element will come here, A star 2 0 will come as the next element like that whatever is the first column okay should now become the first row of the transformed and i mean of the transposed matrix okay and each term will be just the conjugate term uh, with respect to this original matrix so i should write the matrix as follows this will be a star 0 0 then a star 1 0 etc etc the last element will be sorry a star 0 n minus uh, no not 0 rather n minus 1 0 and this will be a star 1 uh, 0 1 okay etc etc the general term will be a star 0 n and the last term will be a star 0 capital n minus 1 okay like this my matrix will be composed let me just write down this general term okay rest of the terms you can complete it is a star this will be 1 n okay etc etc and the last element for this nth row will be uh, a star n minus 1 comma n all right the last element of the entire matrix will be a star n minus 1 n minus 1 all right and this will be multiplied by v0, v1, etc., etc., up to vn minus 1. All right. So that since we are interested in finding out un, okay, un will be clearly seen, un will be this row and this column vector we have to consider. That means to say a star 0n multiplied by v0, a star 1n multiplied by v1 and the last one will be a star n minus 1n multiplied by 
v n minus 1. So, that means to say that what I get out of here is again this term a star 0 n v 0 plus a star 1 n v 1 ok so on so on and the last term will be a star n minus 1 n v n minus 1 which I can express in the summation form as k is equal to let me write down on the next page my u n expressed in the summation form will be k equal to 0 to n minus 1 a star k n v k. All right. This is what I have got. Just this index, this first index is changing. This is 0 in the first term, 1 in the second term, n minus 1 in the last term. So, just generalizing this a star k n k varying from 0 to n minus 1. Yes, please. This was our previous uh, paper. So, I was composing u n, which was nothing but the product of this and this. So, a star 0 n v 0, a star 1 n v 1, etc., etc., up to a star n minus 1 n uh, v n minus 1. Okay. All this term summed up together. Okay. That gives me u n equal to k is equal to 0 to n, this expression. So, that means to say that what I am getting as a star k n, this index k and n is with reference to the original A matrix itself. Okay? So, I think that now whatever doubts you had in the last class should uh, get solved right now and uh, a very similar argument holds good for the uh, case of two dimensional function. In this case, I have taken u and v to be n dimensional vectors and uh, rather than that, we will be considering n by n matrices for u and v. u will be an original uh, matrix, will be the original matrix of size n by n, v will be the transformed matrix of size n by n and the A matrix which we have, okay, there should be n minus, uh, there should be n by n such matrices, each matrix having a size n by n. So, that totally we really get a space of n square by n square. Okay. So, this we had seen because uh, let us recapitulate. What we got in the last class was an expression like this. For the two dimensional functions, our transformation relationships was like this, V k L was equal to summation over m n equal to 0 to n minus 1, double summation, u m n a k L m n. That means to say, I repeat what I said in the last class, that is to say, m nth element of the matrix having index k l. This matrix of k l, matrix of index k l is what we have to take in order to compose the k lth element of the transform v matrix. Okay. So, totally there will be uh, n by n such matrices, each of size n by n. All right. So, in this expression, our index of k l were defined as follows, both k and l were ranging from 0 to n minus 1 and the inverse transformation relationship was written double summation k l equal to 0 to n minus 1 v k l a star k l m n okay, where m n was in the range of 0 to n minus 1 okay. and you can well understand that why it is a star m n. If this is a m n in the uh, forward transformation, this will be a star m n in the reverse transformation by exactly the similar argument and we are composing the u m n -th element and as you are seeing that in order to just compute this u m n -th element, okay, 
I have to do totally n square number of computation and I have to do such computation n square number of times because again u matrix is of size n by n. So, our computational complexity was n square into n square that is to say n to the power 4 which I said was an enormous complexity. So, we have to try and reduce the uh, complexity of computation and that is exactly what we are going to discuss today. Is there any doubts at this stage? Alright. So, today now I introduce the concept of separable transforms. separable transformation now what we are having in this computation you clearly see in our earlier case in this computation we were having uh, the element a m n with the index k l all right so what I am now going to have, I mean this was an element. So now, we would like to design a transformation, okay, such that I can write A M N with index K L, if it is possible for me to write this element as a product of two elements and what are those two elements? A K M B L N, okay. Either I write it this way or I write it, rather I define it this way that I can have A K comma M B L comma N. Let us assume that I can write this M nth element of uh, with index K L as the product of A K M and B L N, okay, where the set of a m with index k that means to say whatever I have defined as the first term over here a k m now I am defining this because here k can vary from 0 to n minus 1 ok if I complete if I consider this complete set what does this complete set indicate what does this complete set of a k m k 0 to n minus 1. What does this complete set indicate? Complete set indicates the set of orthonormal basis vectors. Okay? So, this actually indicates one dimensional complete orthonormal set set of basis vectors. All right. And very similarly, the set BL with index N, where L is defined over 0 to N minus 1, this is yet another one dimensional complete orthonormal set of basis vectors. So, I am just writing this KL MN, okay, as the product of these two, AKM and B L N. Okay. If I write that, all right. Okay. Uh, obviously, I am considering I am considering the I, I define the A matrix to be the set of vectors a k m okay and i define the b matrix as the set of b ln okay l equal to 0 to n minus 1 in this case also k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 now all the now this a and b matrix which i am defining right now okay where 
basically I am just taking a separable case. So, as I told you that I am just writing this a k l m n m n th element as the product of two elements a k m and b l n. So, uh, this matrices a and b which I am getting okay, both of them should be unitary matrices themselves. Okay, I am considering the original matrix okay, or the original a matrix okay, to be a unitary matrix and even the separable matrices which I am getting, okay, those are also going to be unitary. It can be proved. All right. So, what I am considering is since they are unitary, I should have A A star is equal to A T A star and that is equal to the identity matrix by the unitary matrix definition simply. And similarly, B B star T equal to B T B star and that is equal to identity matrix and I can choose the A matrix and B matrix to be of the same form. I can matrix, I can choose A matrix and B matrix in fact to be equal. Okay. So, I choose B same as the A matrix. So, if I choose that, alright, then let us take this relationship, the uh, our original two-dimensional transformation relationship, okay. I am just showing it over here. This was our two-dimensional transformation relationship. So, what I will do now in this summation, okay. In this summation, instead of writing A K L M N, I will simply write it as a product of A K M and A L N. All right. So, let me write it that way. Okay. I can write now V K L okay, should be equal to the index of double summation will not change M N equal to 0 to N minus 1 and I will write it as A K M. Okay. U I am writing in the middle. Okay. U M N A L N. Just compare what I wrote just now with whatever I have written earlier. Right now I am writing A K M product A L N. Okay. Earlier I had written A K L M N. So, it means one and the same thing because I have just separated this A K L M N into two terms. A K M A L N. Alright. And just I have put U in the middle. A K M on this side, A L N on this side. It does not matter to me because after all this is a summation term. So, I can just, I mean interchange the order of the terms. It is A K M, U M N, A L N, M N varying from 0 to N minus 1. Alright. Now, if I want to represent this, okay, in the matrix notation, what should I do? Because after all, this V K L is what? V K L is the single element of the V matrix. So, if I want to compose the entire V matrix, okay, I can write from this expression, okay, this you can easily verify, okay. If I want to compose the entire V matrix, okay, by making use of this relationship, alright, by making use of this relationship, then in the matrix notation, what should I write? It should be a product of how many matrices? Three matrices. It should be a product of three matrices for A, K, M, the A matrix, for U, M, N, the U or rather the image matrix and A, L, N, I can write it as simply the A transpose. Okay? You can verify this again by, I mean if you have any doubts, okay, you can yourself write down the matrix in the matrix form and verify this relationship yourself. This V matrix will be equal to this I get exactly from this relationship, I get the matrix expression as V equal to A U 
A transpose. Okay. Uh, if I had called, I mean, let me call this as, I mean, I think I had already numbered the equations as 1, 2, 3 and 4. 1 and 2 was the relationship in the vector form. The forward transformation, reverse transformation in the vector form, those equations were called as 1 and 2. The forward transformation and the reverse transformation in the case of two dimensional functions were named as equations 3 and 4. So, let me name this as equation number 5. All right, and you can tell me, I take this expression, I take u of mn equal to this summation, and again this a star kl mn, this term I will break into separable terms. If I do that, okay, can anybody tell me what should I get? This in the matrix form, I am composing the u matrix. So, this will be A star T, okay, V A star. This is, this is A star transpose V A star, okay. This again, I leave it to you for verification, okay. So, this is what you will get. So, equation 5 and 6, now what I get, okay. Again, indicate the transfer pair. Okay, you may think that what is the difference? Because after all, in the earlier case, I was having uh, a transformation defined in this fashion. Okay, and in this case, the transformation is defined in this fashion. I have already analyzed that in the earlier case, the computational complexity was order n to the power four. Let us see what is going to be the order of computation for this case. Let us take any equation. Supposing I take equation number 5. What is the size of A matrix? N by N. What is the size of U matrix? N by N. So, if I want to compute the product of A, U, alright, what is going to be the total computational complexity in that process? n square complexity. Okay. And in the result, I get an n by n matrix. So, I have done n square number of computations. Alright. And again, this n by n matrix, I have to multiply with a transpose, which is yet another n by n matrix. Okay. So, Totally, I get how many? 2 n square. Rather, I can say for each one of the terms, in order to compose a single term of that matrix, can you tell me how many computations you are doing? Single term of A, U, A transpose. That is to say, single term of B matrix. How many computations you are doing? 2 n. 2 n. 2 n, please note. In order to compose the single element of A product U, it is N computations. Again, you are multiplying this resultant matrix with A transpose. Again, you are doing yet another N computations. So, you are doing two N computations per element. Alright. And what is your matrix size of V? N by N. So, in order to entirely compose the V matrix, how many computations are you required to do? 2NQ. So, the number of computations in this case is equal to 2NQ. In the earlier case, I was having n to the power 4 and I am having in this form, I am having total number of computations as 2NQ. Alright. So, I have reduced the number of computations. Yes, please. Any questions? Pardon? Okay. I will repeat why it is coming as 2NQ. A matrix is of size N by N. U matrix is of size N by N. So, in order to compose a single element of the product matrix A, U, I have to do N number of computations. All right. That product matrix A, U, which I get, that has to be remultiplied with A transpose matrix. Alright. 
again in this matrix multiplication process to get a single term i have to do n number of computations so in order to compute a single term of the final matrix v i require n plus n that is 2n number of computations and i have to do that computation for all the n by n elements that means to say totally it is 2n cube number of computations as against n to the power 4 so 2n cube means if i write it in the complexity order i will write this as order of n cube i will write this one as order n to the power 4 so i am reducing the complexity order is that clear to you so just by just by what what made the complexity reduction simply the separability all right now i will just uh, give you little bit of extra concept on that separability okay but before i go into that let me generalize the case further so far i have considered the u matrix and the v matrix to be of size n by m that is to say absolutely square matrix but what happens when i have a rectangular matrix i can have that because my image need not be a square image all the time my image could be a rectangular image and let us say that my image size is m by n that is to say u is of size is of size m by n if i have that okay what happens to this relationship i cannot have this a and this a to be equal okay because obviously my matrix multiplication dimension itself doesn't hold good because now i have u as m by n okay even v also i should get as what v also i should get as an m by n matrix so naturally what i have to do the pre multiplication matrix so in general terms i should call this middle one is the image matrix the pre multiplication is being done by the by the a matrix so this is the pre multiplier matrix and this is the post multiplier matrix and this is the transformed matrix so now if i take u to be of size m by m what is the size of the pre multiplier matrix the pre multiplier matrix should be of size m by m should be the pre multiplier matrix pre multiplier and what should be the size of the post multiplier matrix n by n so n by n is the post multiplier matrix so totally you will get v as the m by n matrix and rather i should write it as follows my transformation relationship for rectangular images for rectangular the size is specified as m by n images the transformation matrix is the transformation relationship is defined as follows v matrix is equal to a m matrix u a n matrix okay let me call this as relation 7 and u matrix is equal to a star m u a star n sorry this is v please make this correction this is v this is not u so u is equal to am star v i repeat this is v and this is a n star this is equation number 8 okay and in this case a m and a n okay are m by m and n by n unitary matrices respectively all right now again i go back to my this expression 
where I had got the V matrix equal to A U A transpose. All right. Now this equation five, take it and let us take the transpose on both the sides. Take equation number five. All right. Take the transpose on both the sides. What happens? What do you get as V transpose? Anybody? A A U this whole thing transpose. Okay. A. This is what I will get. Alright. Now what does this mean? Let us have some physical interpretation of this. This means to say that I will first do a transformation on the columns. This matrix, this A U transpose will mean that I am first transforming the columns of U and then I am transforming each row of the result in order to get the each each row of the V matrix. Alright. So, this is the way we will do. In fact, more of this will be clear when we come over to the specific transforms. So far, I have not considered any specific transforms. I am talking in general about the transformation matrices. Alright. This will be clear to uh, make further clear to you. But this is basically a relationship which I am getting directly from the equation number 5 which I had got. Alright. Now, just uh, some property of the separable transform or exactly uh, how do we get the separable transform those things I will see. Now, I told you that we are getting the uh, I mean we have considered uh, n by n one n by n image as the original image and another n by n image as the transformed image. All right. Now, if I do a row ordering on those matrices, okay, I can convert a matrix into a vector. All right. So I can convert an n by n matrix into a vector. All right. Vector of dimension n square. So, let us do that. Supposing uh, our original expression which we had uh, got, okay, that means to say uh, this was our original transformation relationship. Yeah. This transformation relationship, what I will now do is I will instead of writing it in the matrix form, I will write the entire transformation in the vector form. So, let me write it like this. I write a calligraphic V and that I am writing as a product Cal A Cal U. Okay. Just to distinguish it from this, I am writing in the calligraphic notation and V is of size in n square. V is a vector of size n square. A is a matrix of size. What is the size of A? A matrix. The calligraphic A matrix. No, not n by n. V is of size n square. This calligraphic V is of size n square morning because I have considered the V matrix. Okay, which is of size n by n. From this, I am composing this calligraphic V vector. This is a vector of size n square. Okay, so this is of dimension n square. U is of dimension n square. U is of dimension n square because again from the original image, okay, the my U matrix was of size n by n. Okay, and from this, I am constructing a u vector of size n square. Is that clear? Then what should be the size of a, uh, this 
ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मैट्रिक्स ए एन टू दॉर फोर डोट लाइक दैट टेल इट एज द एज द मैट्रिक्स फॉर एन स्क्वायर बाय एन स्क्वायर सो दिस कैलिग्राफिक ए ओके विच इज द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मैट्रिक्स इज ऑफ साइज एन स्क्वायर बाय एन स्क्वायर इज द क्लियर टू यू सो वॉट आई हैव गॉट वॉज दैट आई गॉट द मैट्रिक्स रिलेशनशिप एस this was my matrix relationship i mean rather each element of the matrix okay this was written like this and i am just converting a matrix into a vector all right i am converting a matrix into vector so i have got n by n matrix and i have row ordered okay and composed n square dimensional vector so u is the n square dimensional vector for the image v is the n square dimensional vector for the transformed image and my transformation is simply an n square by n square transformation in earlier case what was it i had n by n matrices each of size n by n and right now i am having everything to be a n square by n square matrix simply that i mean instead of matrix i am writing the form of vector is that clear all right now what i want to do i want to represent this cal a matrix okay in the form of separable matrix okay and let us see how we can write in the form of separable matrix uh if you are familiar with the matrix algebra i think you might have uh, come across the term of kronecker product of two matrices in case you haven't heard let me give you the definition and the basic idea of kronecker products okay so before going further let me give you a definition of kronecker products of matrices okay the definition is if a and b are m1 by m2 and n1 by n2 matrices okay then their kronecker product kronecker product is defined as follows a the symbol for kronecker product is this within a circle write a cross it is the kronecker product sign kronecker product of a and b the definition of this is that you choose individual element of the a matrix okay element is a n n is the element and multiply that element with the entire b matrix and take a set of all these this i mean when you are multiplying a m n with the b matrix you do not get an element anymore you get a matrix okay and take the set of all these matrices defined over m and n so in the matrix form okay i can just break it up okay and write down as follows this a m n instead of writing as a m n i am now breaking it up a 1 1 b matrix a 1 2 b matrix etc etc a 1 m 2 b matrix then this is a 2 1 b matrix okay etc etc a m 1 1 b matrix the last element is a m 1 m 2 b matrix so simply by expanding this i am having this matrix one minute one minute okay i mean you are saying a is 0 0 all right i mean uh, it's a matter of convention let me tell you 
some people write the matrix uh, indices starting from 0 to n minus 1. Some people write it as the indices starting from 1 to n. Okay, so please uh, uh, take that into consideration. Here, instead of, I mean, if I had uh, uh, written from A00, okay, I would have simply gone up to M2 minus 1. And in this case, I would have gone as M1 minus 1. All right, it doesn't matter much. Now, what is this composed of? This is a matrix, no doubt. This is a matrix, no doubt. And what is the size of that matrix I find? It is an M by M1 by M2 matrix. But are the elements simple elements? Yes. Elements are matrices themselves. So, what is this called? These are, these are block matrices. Okay. So, I get basically M1 by M2 block matrix of dimension N1 by M2. So, this is an M1 by M2 block matrix. of dimension n1 by n2 all right now i take specific case if i make m1 equal to m2 equal to n1 equal to n2 and that is equal to n that means to say if i choose the dimension of a matrix and b matrix to be equal and I take both of them to be square matrix and equal dimension, take it to be n, okay. And if I take the A matrix and B matrix to be the same matrix, if I take A matrix and B matrix to be the same matrix, okay, then that Cal A matrix which I had got, Cal A was the transformation matrix of what size? n square by n square size. The scale A matrix can be written as the Kronecker product of A matrix and A matrix. What is the dimension of this A matrix? N, n by n. This is also n by n. And this is n square by n square. So, please always remember the difference between product and Kronecker product. This is the Kronecker product. If you do the Kronecker product of two n by n matrices, then you will get an n square by n square matrix. So, this n square by n square matrix you are separating into two matrices A and A. Okay? And now your transformation relationship again will be defined just like the way we defined it for the separable transformations, taking this A. So, now uh, just this relationship, this separable relationship, okay, we are getting because our original was the n square by n square matrix and now we are getting n by n. Now, simply because it was an n square by n square matrix, my order of computation was n to the power 4 and because it is separated, my order of computation is 2 n cube. All right. Now, given any unitary transform, okay, a two dimensional separable unitary transform like this can be defined. Now, there is a question. I have just separated this original n square by n square matrix into Kronecker product of two n by n matrices. Now, you can as well ask me that what about these a matrices? Can't I separate these a matrices itself? I can. I can make this as separable. I can make this as separable. Rather, I can tell that this is A1, Kronecker product A1, okay, Kronecker product A1, Kronecker product A1, okay, and there is no end to it. I can keep on splitting like this. And if by splitting it once, I get a computational advantage. From n to the power 4, I have reduced it to 2n cube. If I split it down further, okay, I have got every reason to believe that I will save further and further in the order of complexity. And this is exactly what we are doing in the case of computation of fast transformations. Okay. So, in order to compute fast 
transforms. Okay? What we really have to do is that we have to decompose the original matrix, original transformation matrix into as many Kronecker product elements as possible and then do the transformations on each of such elementary matrices. Then you are saving the computations, okay? Because you can really think that in order to compute even the 2 n cube number of computations is not a matter of joke. N is, when n is of the order of 512 or 1024, 2 n cube means enormous amount of computations and the idea is to have first transformations so that the transformation times are cut down. Because what was the basic purpose? Why at all we are going in for a, for an image transformation? One purpose which I had explained in the earlier class was that in order to get a uh, data compression, okay, or rather so that we can transmit the data in real time. So, if we are thinking of transmitting the image data in real time, okay, and we are going into the transformation domain and then doing that analysis, so the first computational saving which I have to look for is in the transformation process itself, whatever computations I have, I must try to save that. So that is why I should go in for first transformations. Anyway, we will see different type of first transformations, okay, when we come across to the, I mean, when we go over to the specific cases of transformations, okay. And right now, just I uh, tell you about the basis images, okay. I mean, the idea was very much uh, um, uh, introduced to you. Let me again go back to our two-dimensional transformation relationships, okay. Let this be the starting point once again. Take this as the transformation, uh, I mean, take this as the starting point. VKL was the element of the transform matrix, okay. UMN was the element of the original matrix that is this is the image this is the transformed image all right now this akl i said that i am going to make it separable so i can define now a complete matrix as follows okay let ak star okay be the kth column of a star t Okay, so I am taking a column vector A star K so that I can write A K L star as A K A L star A K star A L tra star transpose. Okay, so I am just writing this A K star A L star transpose. This becomes what? If I take this column and this as the, I mean, this is the column vector and there is a row vector like this, okay. What do I get? The product becomes a matrix, product becomes an n by n matrix and this is exactly what I am getting. In order to get the a k l th matrix, I am taking a k th column multiplied by a k l th row, okay, and I get a star k l th matrix. So, this is uh, my first definition, this is my definition of the A star KL matrix and I also define the inner product of two matrices. So, definition inner product of two matrices. The inner product uh, definition is that if I have two matrices F and G. Okay, it's inner product. This is the notation we normally use for the inner product. The inner product of two matrices will be defined as follows. Summation M is equal to 0 to N minus 1. Summation N equal to 0 to N minus 1. F of Mn, where F of Mn is the element of this F matrix. And G star Mn is the element of the G matrix. If I do that, Yep, please. Okay. 
if I if I do that, then I can write this expression again. This is my original. I mean, this is the way I am composing the U matrix. All right. So my U matrix can now be written as summation over K L equal to zero to n minus one V K L. Okay, multiplied by A star K L. Okay, and I get V K L. Okay, that is to say from this top expression, you can just verify it. I get V K L as the inner product of the U matrix and A star K L matrix. This relationships you can verify. We are going to get that. But let us have a physical interpretation of this U matrix. This top relationship. Let me call this as equation number 9. And let me call this as equation number 10. And let us have a look at the equation number 9 now. What are we doing? Can anybody tell? Can anybody give a physical interpretation to equation number 9? A star K is the simply the KLS matrix. Okay. Of course, taking the conjugate. And this multiplied by the coefficient VKL. So, the image U is now been expressed. U is the complete image. Now, in earlier expression, this was the element. And now, U is the complete image. And the complete image, I am getting as a summation of, summation of n by n uh, uh, such basis functions. This A, K, L, okay. I am getting it, uh, getting the n by n image as a series summation of n by n such matrices, each of size n by n. Okay. And series summation, of course, not a direct summation. It is a summation with respect to this coefficient. Means it is this multiplied by the coefficient. So, if I can get a set of n by n matrices, each of size n by n okay and if i can design this coefficients v k l i can compose the image all right so in the next class i will show you some such uh, several such set of basis functions just as an example i will show you that okay and then we will go over to some specific transformation and we will discuss on the discrete Fourier transforms. Any questions, please? All right. Thank you.